Okay, I'm going to introduce the members of the committee. To my far right is Ms. Amy Gunn, uh, Ms. David, uh, Mr. Paleka, uh, Ms. Poindexter, Mr. Kanua, Ms. Eo, Mr. Chung, and Ms. Twilly, and I'm Chairman Fresh Oishi. Okay, is there statements from the public on agenda items? Kilo, do we have any specifiers? Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Yes, sir. Are, do we have any testifiers? I believe people may be signing up as well. Okay, I'll check with you okay. in a moment. Uh, Kona? Good morning, Chair. We have no testifiers for your committee today. Thank you. Kau? Good morning, Mr. Chair. We have no testifiers for your committee this morning. Thank you. Waimeo? Uh, good morning, Chair. We have no testifiers. Uh, we apparently have lost video, so I'm going to read the Okay, thanks. Uh, Kohala. Good morning, Chair. We have no testifiers for this committee this morning. Okay, thank you. And then Pohoa. Good morning, Chair. We also have no testifiers for your committee this morning. Thank you. Okay, so we're just waiting for Hilo. in any of the locations. Okay, here you'll see none. Okay, communications. This is the clerk. Communication 54. Communication 54. Request discussion with Hawaii Island yeah, members yeah, of the Hawaii State yeah. Legislature regarding county home rule authority, transit accommodations tax, and funding of Hawaii Island projects from governmental relations and economic building. Development Committee Vice Chair Margaret Willey is dated December 12, 2014. Ms. Willey, can I have a motion to close the file? Yes. Uh, to close the file. On your mind, please. 
Motion to close file on communication 54. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Second by Ms. Eoff. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Rudy. Uh, oh, um, before you go on, okay, I just wanted to explain to members of uh, this committee is that we did have in the previous um, um, term, we had our legislatures come in twice to discuss about projects, CIP projects, and also about the TAT. The only other, the only thing we didn't really discuss was about home rule. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of um, make it where you know the CIPs and the TAT, since it was already discussed, um, and so maybe like for the new members, if you folks have any questions that you folks can ask, okay. But for the members that were here, you know, in the past, we had that discussion. We know what was already said. Okay. No, no. I'm not chair. Let me speak first. You're out of order. Okay. So I just wanted to let you guys know that, okay, because then I don't want this to be repeated over and over and over, okay. But for, like I said, for the new members, I'll give you guys new, but for the old members, you know, we already had this discussion twice, so, okay. So Ms. Willie, go ahead. Oh, and then just to um, let members know, present right now, we have Senator Russell Ruderman. Okay, so Mr. Um, Senator, you can come forward. Now, I, um, I guess Representative Nicole Lowen couldn't make it, and um, I don't know if um, Representative Mark Nakashima was going to be able to attend. So before you start this, we want to find out from you what legislatures are going to be here and what who are not going to be here. Okay, go ahead. Other than Russell, they all said they were unable to attend, and um, I did get I did follow up with. Uh, a note asking if they wanted to make any comments and um, yesterday I did receive two that I'll hand out um, from uh, one from Josh Green saying he'll be at the open uh, forum in on the 15th and uh, Cindy Evans had several comments and I those are being staffed and I will pass um, those out. Ms. Wayne, actually? Yeah, I just had a, a question on the request. So this was put on because of a request coming in for a 75 minute like, request to post that. I'm just kind of confused at how, um, why we're doing it, I guess, again. Yeah. I, I mean, I understand the Home Rule Council member really, but um, to request 75 minutes and take all that time and things that have been discussed with it, so I, I'm just kind of concerned that we, we're just starting off as a new council and on your committee you have a 75 minute of this when we have a lot of things. And, and I, I cut it down to one hour, to 60 yeah. minutes. Okay. Yeah, because of the other two, you know, on the agenda that was already discussed. So I felt, I felt that we don't need that much of the time. And, it, and, then I, time. and I also figured that a lot of the, you know, the House reps and the senators wouldn't be here anyway, so exactly. we don't need that amount of time. Yeah. Well, thank you for cutting it down. Yeah, sure. Okay. 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 Go ahead. Um, uh, yeah, I want to say, yes, the home rule issue, and that's obviously moving on and it's going to be um, something significant in the state legislature. Um, and I just want to clarify for the chairman, on the TAT, there are major things moving along. There's on December 18th, we all got a uh, memorandum um, from the past state county functions working group and it was really um, in light of that I felt that this was uh, relevant. It's certainly very relevant to me um, and we certainly failed in the past at getting a fair share of the TAT. Um, in terms of the um, projects, um, I think that with um, Senator Rutterman here, um, what he has and what we can discuss with him, I think that's fine. And otherwise, I don't have a certain a problem um, not focusing on um, other uh, uh, other capital projects. Um, I I can't understate um, the importance of the TAT and that we act in a more concerted manner. And um, if you have read the um, 
the state county functions working group report that we were all given a copy of, um, it is very state oriented and in my opinion very wrong and very heavily um, uh, the representation by state people um, and Honolulu um, is you can see the uh, really that that we are going to get the short end of the stick and I'm just trying to be um, uh, proactive here and this is really the key thing to me and if, and if particularly in light of the December 18th memorandum. So um, I'd like to open it up and and have. Um, Russell, go ahead first, and then um, discuss the questions that we have on these items. Well, Ms. Willie, you have the floor right now, so if you have any specific questions to the senator, why don't you ask him? Okay. Would so you prefer that rather than letting him speak for well, okay. 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 I'm just asking. Um, uh, Russell, are you familiar with the anything on the um, state county, their working group that they're doing? They're doing this task force. Um, if not, I'm going to get you a copy of this um, memorandum. Um, we have Deanna Sacco from here, but I'm just going to give you a couple uh, examples of my concern. Um, I studied this. Yeah, on, this uh, Senator, do you have a copy of this? No, I apologize. I'm okay, so why don't we have staff? go and make a copy of this so that all members can have this and also Senator can have that. Then maybe you can move on to CIP projects. Okay, I was trying to respect your uh, uh, concern on that, but with um, Russell, so I will give this to whoever. Um, I think I can without, uh, so do you want me to do CIP projects? Um, okay, I think in terms of um, the lava flow, I understand you are going to have a number of state issues and wondering uh, my questions in terms of how we can help and what we can do together. Um, I, I know that we will have more follow-up on that issue in terms of um, our council and looking at county issues, whether it's housing or also, um, say, in terms of tourism is probably a lot of uh, the comments that I get from people, why aren't we doing more to really make this a part of our well-being and not our just our mouth-being um, and provide for that. I think there was a letter in the paper, I think it was today, um, uh, pretty much on that issue. So if you want to speak on that particular point. Um, what, what proposals I might have. You, you might have on the state and how we can help or what you want us to be looking at in terms of the county. I'm trying to look at what, uh, by the way, uh, you guys must not have heard, I'm the only state legislator in the county that they want because they didn't show up the last few times. So yes. Um, I'm trying to look at the things that the state is the state's pulling on and you know, the county's been doing a wonderful job of managing the emergency aspects of, of this situation. But there are certain aspects of, you know, uh, life in general and the long-range planning that I think fall under state things like the transportation. So um, I'm, I'm looking at a few things that I'll be requesting directly today from Lava Club. Any expressions of support in the form of a resolution and would, of course, be very useful. It's uh, part of the process is explaining to the rest of the state out there in Florida, which are very poorly understood in general, and if you guys want to help with that, it's very welcome. I'll be asking for a few emergency appropriations as well as a couple of uh, longer term uh, CIP type requests. The most ambitious of the CIP requests will be, uh, again, a feasibility study for a harbor and or an air Because if we are isolating for a length of time, those will be critical needs. I realize that those things are not normally developed in a hurry, but this is a situation that is unique and has never happened before and requires an out of the box And if we're cut off from our, if our road is breached, we have people who are four hours from the emergency room. And, and supplies will be virtually impossible to get out there. So we have to look at things like that. I'll also be asking for a CIA for funds for a bookmobile. I want to establish a mobile library. People will no longer be able to access a library. 
will be asking for an ambulance for the Puget District, as that council member Ilgon is well aware, has been a strong proponent of. We'll be asking for funds for that. Uh, I'm also looking for um, a grant and aid support for the two charter schools, which are very severely and urgently impacted right now, as well as the Puget Community Medical Center. For each of those three organizations, their expenses have suddenly greatly increased because they've had to relocate in the case of the schools established satellite campuses on both sides of the globe. Um, the reason I'm looking at the charter schools is because charter schools only depend on uh, the per pupil formula for getting money. If a public school loses its part of its enrollment, they still have their rent paid and their lights are still on. But for a charter school to get all their money on a per pupil formula, and these two schools have seen a large drop in their in their enrollment because of evacuation and um, their expenses have increased while their, while their budget has decreased. So those are a couple of things I'll be looking at from that point of view. And any expressions of support for any of those things would be great. I have not heard that the Department of Transportation needs any emergency appropriations. I would of course support that if they did, but they haven't said so. What about like uh, in terms of uh, uh, transitional housing, I mean, and housing and sort of, um, I mean, my concern has been that I would like people to feel they can stay in place and maximize that time and not feel they have to leave because they'll be no longer have any um, uh, reason affordable homes in Hilo or otherwise. And that was really one of my concerns in terms of the the county or otherwise I confess I don't have a solution for that I, I am look, working on one bill that relates to a statewide concern for housing on ag on legitimate ag lands for ag workers and perhaps ag tourism that may be relevant here but this does uh, hint at the idea of home rule in the sense that the Hawaii County has certain housing needs based on our situation here that the other counties do not have, and it is perhaps an example of why there is why home rule is important. Um, I'd like to um, really work on the TAT issue, so I'm going, I'd like to Thank allow you. others to yield the now and then come back when that Thank you. Okay, any other members want to ask the senator about the, uh, I guess, the funding for Hawaii Island projects? By the way, how do you pronounce your last name? Is it Rutterman or Rutterman? I've heard it both ways, and I want to, you know, address you properly. Well, thank you. I'm not offended by either pronunciation, but I'm a Rutterman than most. Oh, well, Senator Rutterman, thank you very much for coming here today. It's hard work. Thank you. You know, I, I want to, you know, really uh, uh, thank you for all of the hard work you've done for your district, in particular, in bringing to the forefront how, you know, how desperate the needs are right now in you know, all the things that have been happening. I really want to thank you in that regard. Um, and also, you, you touched upon us supporting you, perhaps by a resolution. You know how, how quickly you guys work, right? Something might come up in committee, and you guys need something like that, right? Some testimony. So in that regard, um, who's your appointing person at, at your office that we can interface with. Well, anyone in my office would be fine. My office manager, her name is Meiji China, and my legislative aide is Michael Greeno. Uh, but you're welcome, you know, whoever answers this one. Can't handle that. Could you instruct them to at least let each of us know when something comes up in committee that you feel needs some support from the county council? You know, we can't do it as a group because I don't think we're going to have time to do it. Um, but you know, we, we certainly can send individual testimonies. You know, sometimes these things just come up one day. You know, we only have one day in advance. Well, well, thank you for inviting me to do that. We will. That's a great idea. Uh, how long does it take? I mean, there's a certain. I'm sure it takes a certain number of meetings to 
pass a resolution. What is that time? Well, you're going to have to ask. Well, I, I, I don't mean to derail the discussion, but I mean some of these things, support for the harbor, the airstrip, support for the schools, the medical center. I, I've been a you know, broken record here for the last two or three months, and I, I would, you know, if you can proactively express sure. support, that would be great. Otherwise, I certainly welcome your individual support on this very well. Yes, I mean, and you know, we've seen that in the news, the newspapers. Uh, but, you know, if things just pop up really quickly, you yeah. can have somebody contact us, and it would certainly be more than happy to support because you're going to be a strong supporter of your district. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, and you probably know, because you've been talking to Flint Hughes as, as well as the Sands for State. Um, you know, right now I'm preparing a resolution to uh, establish a task force. This doesn't have anything to do with the uh, model flow. Uh, but it's, you know, to really create more momentum from what Senator Schatz did to his working to regard to Albizias and, and other large trees. So, you know, hopefully you know, this body will see fit to approve, you know, the uh, creation of the task force to really take a hard look at what's going on <coughs> with, with that and, you know, how we can prevent, you know, what happened with the hurricane and this big wind that we had actually just a few days ago. Um, and also, you know, this is kind of like maybe pie in the sky. It might be a kind of crazy idea, but another resolution that uh, you know I've been preparing is for the uh, the legislature or the state to look at the feasibility, both economically and from an engineering standpoint, of building a bridge over that lava flow. And now, the feasibility aspects would would. And it would be specifically requesting that the state look at utilizing special revenue bonds. So in other words, there might be a toll. I don't even know if you can span, you know, a lava flow, quite frankly, but that's part of the feasibility study, right? Um, and we don't know if there will be further breakouts. That's another aspect of the feasibility study. Um, but, you know, I think if, if they can determine that there's enough traffic in that area to warrant something like this, where the, the state would fund the money with the expectation, just like the Golden Gate Bridge, where, you know, you, you pay a, a toll fee and get to go over the bridge, maybe a dollar per day. I think it's money better spent than going all the way around the chain of Prairie Road, quite, quite frankly. But I don't know how it's going to be. But that's something that might be coming up. Like, and, you know, I think it behooves all of us to really try to do whatever we can, can you know, however silly the ideas may be. Um, you know, people out there in your district are desperate. We all understand that. So, uh, I, I, you know, I applaud you for your efforts. And, you know, we're trying our best. Thank you, Council Member. And let me respond briefly. By the way, I, mm -hmm. we're so focused on the lava flow sometimes that I forget about the Albizi efforts. But that is... Uh, Another thing I'm working on that I hope the county will, will support. Um, when we got together, you know, uh, Flint and myself and the Springer Association's Council. Excuse me, sir. Come on, Council. At one of the sites, your microphone is on. Can you please turn it off? Keep, okay, go ahead, sir. We'd actually been working on busy for about a year before the storm. busy became much more famous after that, but. With uh, Senator Schatz's help, we we did have um, a few discussions and came up with a plan that the federal government, the state, the county, and our utility, and this would be true on each island, would, would put in some serious money every year to control our busy. And uh, Flint Hughes and Springer K have developed a plan where phase one is protecting critical infrastructure, essentially roads and power lines from uh, Elbizia. Um, they came up with a figure of about six million dollars per year and in the first year we can protect most of the highways. I'm asking the state for two million. That's the amount I was assigned to ask. We're hoping the county will put in two million and the feds will put in two million. Under the heading of disaster preparedness. It's not trying to respond to Pune in particular or this storm in particular. But the fact is, whatever it costs to control Elbizia, we spent much more than that on that storm cleaning up and it was a, it was it was a disaster in many ways. But it was a disaster that was ninety percent caused by our failure to control our busy. 
And if we don't control them proactively, we will face that situation over and over again. As well other counties, essentially the windward and rainy areas of any county have, has this problem. So I hope the county will uh, put a couple million bucks in the budget for this as met, to match. And I also hope they, you will support our request to, the, to uh, appropriate funds from the Invasive Species Council. And I'm considering making this an emergency appropriation because really we got to get started before next hurricane season. We're all thinking about the lava flow, but uh, Puna, we didn't forget about the busy and I appreciate you reminding me. You know, as for the lava bridge, I do like the idea. I think it's uh, such a bridge would be a tourist attraction. And maybe we could, you know, but, uh, but I do want to communicate something that uh, I've heard from our State Department of Engineers, State Department of Transportation, including their engineers. It is not widely known, and I think it's very important information, which is that right now the plan is to repair Highway 130 within a couple of weeks if the lava crosses it. And I'm talking even with the lava tube still growing through it, as soon as it hardens and crusts on the outside, they feel that they can make, it won't be exactly a bridge, it'll be a repaired roadway, essentially layers of cinder, nets, and then gravel. It'll be a gravel roadway. The beauty of that is, it, you know, it's not, it's not a real problem if it spreads out or crosses another location, just do the same thing. If we buy a $10 million bridge for what we hope is the only lava flow and then it shows up and yards down the road, that plant didn't work so good. So I like this, and this, uh, if necessary, can include the brilliant idea that Bryson Kuahar has proposed to use these truck bed platforms interlinked so that this road bed can flex and, and never collapse. Either. Tube collapse. The DOT uh, people tell me that right now they don't think that's necessary. They'll be able to repair the road just with cinder and gravel, and they will do it before the lava crosses uh, railroad, which, which is a matter of two weeks. So that's fantastic news that certainly was not known in the community when the situation started, when we all started fearing this isolation and four hour commute by Chan and Craters Road. And in the worst case scenario, that might still happen, but in a more, the most likely scenario is we will repair that highway. And once again, is I feel it's my job to try to project the, the news that Puna is still alive. Puna's going to be okay. We are resilient. We're going to recover. In fact, this is more of a, uh, this is really a crisis that hasn't happened yet, and it might not happen. And all the real crises that have happened in my community, have been based on fear and overreaction and human caused uh, problems like insurance crises and schools relocating all their kids and great disruption to their kids' lives when it was perhaps not the most appropriate action, which once again gets back into home rule because I think this was a decision made in Honolulu based on people who don't understand our rural districts. Um, but I, I think it's important where the job of civil defense is to keep everybody safe. It's got to be the job of government, both county and state, to find a way forward. And this isn't the end of the world, not for anybody, not for our town, we hope, and certainly not for our community. And we need to make it work in the future, not find a way to, to escape and run away from it. It's something we're going to live with and, and thrive with. And we need to project that to our citizens. Senator, from your perspective, how is our civil defense um, department doing this? Absolutely awesome. I couldn't say anything. I, I couldn't say anything negative about them, uh, uh, Mr. Oliveira, personally, and their whole the whole department, as well as the county administration in general. I think they've done an <coughs> excellent job with emergency preparedness, especially in regards to safety. Yeah, they've done an excellent job of con conveying information. They've done an excellent job of making sure everyone's safe. The missing piece, and I'm not blaming it, it's certainly not civil defense's job, the missing piece is projecting some hope and optimism and, and, and let, helping people see a way forward. We have this phenomena that I call premature evacuation out there. We've had a lot of people leave who don't have to leave. It's caused an economic crisis. A lot of people have lost a lot of their value in their home. Uh, schools, as we mentioned, are in crises, and all this stuff is not is not all necessary. Perhaps I'm not saying it's not necessary. I'm saying it's not the only solution. Is to 
you know, pe pe people uh, in our community are not really afraid of the lava that much. We've walked on lava for 30 years out in Kalapata. The idea that we have to stay away from it, not touch it, not see it, generates this unnatural sort of fear of what is really a natural phenomenon and it's going to have a very limited and manageable impact on our community. We need to work on the management of the situation, not just the run, run from it. So I think civil defense has done a wonderful job, but there are other pieces to the puzzle that are not in place. And I, I'm glad to hear that from your perspective. And I just wanted to say one last thing, and it relates to the whole issue. Uh, might not be totally relevant to what you were saying, but you know, I just wanted to let you know, you know from the Hilo side, the, uh, the things that are going on in Puna have not been lost by those in Hilo, as you well know. You know, from my district, a lot of people ask me, you know, for things, right? We need this, we need that. And, you know, I've had to tell them that right now, the most important thing in all of our resources have to be directed to Puna. And I will say this, not one person who asked me for things disagreed with them. You know, so there is at least that effort from the, you know, other parts of the island, not, you know, not just... Thank That's you. wonderful news, and thank you for expressing that, Council Member. And I do know that almost all the people in Hilo and throughout the island do have compassion and sympathy and understanding for the situation. Yeah. Because every neighborhood is going to eventually get hit by some kind of disaster. Some people think, well, we, we got what we deserved because we bought cheap out there. You knew you were living on the side of a volcano. We hear that kind of thing sometimes, but I have to assume that's an irresponsible minority viewpoint because we're not going to feel that way when your neighborhood gets damaged by a hurricane and tsunami and a lava flow or whatever it is. We're going to have compassion for our neighbors, as have 99% of the people around God and us express. Thank you. Thank you. Just remind the two members, um, we're talking about island-wide projects, TAT, and So if we can shorten that about the lava flow, because we don't have to move for that. Okay, we'll see you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to say thank you to Senator Ruderman for being here. And although um, some of the discussion could be a little bit redundant, I think it's really good that both Mr. Onishi and Ms. Willie have asked for these updates because I think in previous terms we felt more of a disconnect between the legislature and the council. But um, I won't go. Um, reiterate what Mr. Chung has said, but I um, thank you for answering those questions. Um, one thing I do want to make sure is what he mentioned though about our response time, because there's several um, several times when we would like to support things going on in the legislature, and we don't have time to produce a council resolution. But um, I have tried when it's something either important to the island or to um, our districts specifically um, reply with a letter of support and um, even that sometimes takes some longer than you know a day or two to produce but um, that's the main thing is just the timing so it's it's great that we have these updates so that we can be aware of what's going on maybe be prepared in advance and then when the time <coughs> happens that you, you know someone from your staff or another legislator staff um, tells us we need testimony by you know 2 p.m. tomorrow you know, we'll, we won't be caught off guard um, I appreciate the updates and um, bringing forward what, what we have to um, be ready for in that session. Thank you. And thank you, Council Member. And uh, just to reiterate, it's not it's it's not too soon to request support for um, the charter school emergency funding, the medical center emergency funding, the Albizi estate funding, as well as you know, your, your, the county share of, of that project, as well as support for the ambulance. And if you are willing to be as adventurous as this, support the idea of a harbor or an airstrip in Puna. These are things that uh, have identified in the last few months, and it, you know, I welcome the support starting any time, because it will come up urgently, but right now we do have a little time if you're willing to work on it. So we do not need an um, actual build number? We can go ahead and support that concept? Well, that's a good point. Um, there is testimony specific to the bill number that would be useful, but a resolution um, supporting the concept would still be very, very useful. 
because sometimes people have to look at, oh, is this person just advocating for their own district, or is it something the whole island supports? And something like that is this very strong expression that the county supports that idea of not just lower communities. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you um, for coming in. I just wanted to make it known too that I have been receiving updates um, and working uh, alongside Senator Inouye and Representative Mark Nakashima in my district and going um, through meetings, uh, two meetings throughout our community. So um, I want to make sure that you know that they have been actively out in our community and doing the updates, not that because they're not here that they weren't doing that. So I just I just want to share that and I want to thank you for, for definitely being here. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope it's obvious that I was trying to joke when I said yeah, that. I know, I know. <laughs> but I wanted the public <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that the public knew that. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Ulika. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Senator. I just want to take this time to recognize your efforts in the state um, servicing the Pune district. And I know that the other districts, the people in um, Amakua, Kona, Kohala, um, Kau, has been really showing their aloha for Pune. And I just want to say thank you in behalf of Pune and the lower Pune, that the district that I represent, and all the help that you, everyone has provided. And I look to support you in your efforts in the state, and I want to also thank you for connecting us to the state. It means so far away, you bring it so close. So thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Council Member, and also I, I applaud your efforts on the behalf of our district and explaining our needs to the rest of the county. And I, you know, in terms of the yeah, others not being here, I think that there must be something I didn't get the memo on. There must be something really important I'm supposed to be doing, but I, the only one that doesn't know about it. Well, I know today there's a WAM and Finance Committee. They have these uh, updates <laughs> in at the Capitol, at the governor, I think. Well, we have this just about every day these days, and yet I'm still a little consumed with things here in the district. And was trying to spend as much time on the island. It will be full time in a week and a half or so. And I am actually aware of those hearings, and I'm going to the ones that are most relevant to my committees. But I'm playing hooky from some of them to, to address some of the Mr. Chuck, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I want to just apologize to all of my colleagues. I don't usually talk this much. <laughs> this is really important, okay? Uh, but uh, I just wanted to follow up on one more thing that the senator said, you know, it's about supporting proactively some of the measures that he's coming up with. And, you know, what I'm worried about is that all of us will try to uh, prepare a resolution or none of us will prepare a resolution. So I, you know, maybe just suggesting that perhaps uh, uh, council members Koleka and Yiligan, whose districts are directly um, affected by that area. Maybe get together with you and pick which ones they want to do by resolution. I, I think for sure the Alpesia funding, you know, even possibly the, the bigger uh, transportation things. I mean, you know, really leave it up to you guys and, and we'll take it from there. But at least, you know, we, we know where the responsibility lies right now. And, you know, we'll not all be having a mad rush to try to do something. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful seat. Mr. Iligan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to say it's so different um, this year that the project that we're working on, we have your support. And being so close to the issue, we tend to forget um, the other districts. And it's good to know that uh, the district of Hilo supports Pune. You don't normally, um, when I'm in Pune, you don't normally think of Hilo and Pune working together. And um, now, Council Member Paleka and I are working together as Pune, Lower, Ma Mauka, and Makai. It's, I just want to 
thank you so much for even thinking of resolutions for Funa. I just want to show that um, effort and I just want to let the public know that uh, I, I didn't really say it because I, didn't, I felt like it wasn't the right time, but regarding even the Albizias, I'm I'm gonna be the chair for planning, and one of my biggest year heading thing that I'm looking to do is to put an amendment into the general plan regarding invasive species, because invasive species affects everyone. The coffee borer on the west side, the albizias, the red fire ants, and the general plan is about managing the growth for this island, and we all know it's gonna grow, but how do what guidelines should we focus on to manage those growth? And I believe we need to really focus on invasive species. And uh, there's other things that the Senator and I have been working on and been going to meetings, for example, the DOT. And we learned about the um, bridging and a lot of um, issues to resolve regarding the lava issue. But being so close to the issue, I tend to forget um, Hilo, Kona, Hamakua, uh, Kau, and it's so good to know that you're thinking of us and that you're putting up resolutions on your behalf for the District of Puna. So I just want to show some aloha and I hope that I can also help your districts and hopefully we can all be working together for this island. Thank you. Members, you know, we're set moving forward because we may have about 15 more minutes, so why don't we move to home room? Just really can go ahead. Okay, I also wanted to speak on the TA. No, I understand, but let's okay. go with home room. Oh, you rather have home room okay. or TA? No, I'll go ahead and do both. Well, do um, the home room first. Okay. Um, on the home rule issue, I think that we keep bringing up how how we can have an impact here and how important it is. And I think what um, Council Member uh, Illicon was speaking about, like invasive species, and back in 2008, I tried to, I worked on something for the fire ants and to get really the county doing something. And, we, and that was um, passed by that council. And then the response was really, well, that's really a state issue and not for us. And then look where we are. Um, so, um, there is, I mean, just in the context um, even of the TAT and Home Rule on the same thing, um, I, I think one of the issues that's come up is really how much money is going to Hawaii Tourism Authority and that perhaps some of that money that's sort of tourism should be divvied out more um, where it's really uh, the counties having more um, uh, say so and having more initiative and and, um, and challenge and it just using Puna as an example like with the airstrip our tourism numbers are all up that's Puna that that you know going up that four percent up those numbers and that additional spending is because people want to be where nature and the elements and the um, so I just want to you know, it's you're, it's you're trying to say, look at the optimism. This is, what is the silver lining here? And are we making the most of that? Um, so, I mean, obviously, you know where I stand in um, home rule and just to the extent that you can keep us in touch with, um, uh, you know, of what goes on on that issue, whether it's agriculture or health. I mean, we know that we're appealing that decision which really goes far beyond GMOs. It's pretty much anything the state's doing has anything to do with that they can say that we have no, you know, no rights to uh, exercise our jurisdiction. Um, rest, uh, I really wanted to, as the time goes, um, bring up a little on this transit accommodation tax and just express my concerns and if you have any comments. Um, I find what's going on in this task force is very Date oriented. Um, if you that I studied all of the legislative history on the TAT and have testified over there numerous times, and it was really designed for to benefit the counties, and only a five percent administrative tax went to the state. Um, 
in reading this, it talks about that this is all for the benefit of the state and allocating. But I think we've sort of shifted from that. And in the same way, when the economy dropped, it was always this is removing the cap or putting on a cap was temporary. You know, we're just doing this temporary. You know, but you can trust us. You know, and if you have a cap, you remove the incentive for this island. The benefit and the burden get split. So that what is our incentive to keep, you know, promoting and more of that money and that tourism and getting those transient accommodation tax? It was just going to some other pot. Um, I also think there's important issues, just even in terms of the Honolulu neighbor island split. Um, where they're sort of looking at what should that allocation be, and maybe um, the numbers, uh, where there's a whole chunk coming out for the convention center. I feel that should be allocated in part to Honolulu, because if you don't, then you start looking that our numbers goes down. Um, so I just want, this is something that's been important to me, and I would um, I really want to work with you, or if you have comments now or all along. Um, I, I have no people, members of the public who attended this meeting, and it says all of the big guys on the Honolulu side are there. Chief of staff is that they're all on top of this. The neighbor island, they've got one representative, you know, this, that we're not really present. And lastly, I just want to mention in terms of the whole TAT versus GET, the last session, the mayors went in and were promoting the GET, and I'm going, what about the TAT? And, and you know, the legislators were uh, concerned. So um, that's really what I have on that. And I'm going to make my one last comment because I'm um, really done, and that's the idea of the airstrip. I mean, I feel that getting that airstrip is is critical. I mean, if we have two, I'll finish this up. Um, if we had a tsunami, both Hilo and Kona are under, only Waimea is the only airstrip. And that we need to really, I think that that's something that should be a priority. And I'm not sure quite how to work on it, but I'd also be happy to work on that. So if you have any comment to follow up. Yes, uh, thank you, and I'll try to make my comments brief. Um, I appreciate your support for the airstrip. I, I think it won't be, we're not talking about an airport here right now, we're talking about a place where smaller planes can land, but it can evolve as needed. Um, as far as the TAT, I can't justify it, and I'm on your side about this. I think all the neighbor island people would prefer that the county's got more of the TAT if the cap was lifted. But uh, the county's going to have to advocate for that to the budget committees. And yes, we're at a disadvantage as neighbor islanders. We can't be at as many meetings as cheaply as those other people can. But the fact is that the state, just like probably every level of government, almost everywhere, the budgetary situation feels kind of desperate. You know, we're looking at shortfalls, we're looking at reduced expectations, uh, increased costs of some you know, various entitlements, things we can't control. There's a lot of resistance to giving the counties any more money because we let it, the state has to dig up that money somewhere else. It's, it's a, I'm just being really honest, it's an uphill battle, but it's something that if all three of the outer counties, uh, neighbor island counties, were to advocate with one voice, and, and press that upon their legislators, then maybe we can get something done, but it's not something I have any control over and it doesn't look very optimistic to me. I'd like to briefly address the home rule issues. You know, home rule came up just a few weeks ago with regard to, with regards to the GMO lawsuit. I realize that that issue overlaps with the home rule issue, but I want to urge all of you to understand how important home rule is in general not just for this issue, and it ought to be fought for. Home rule affects not just agriculture practices, but uh, other issues like housing, like uh, zoning, fish collection, sewage, cesspools, invasive species. We have different invasive species concerns on each island. They're not the same. So we, we ought to um, fight to keep control as local as possible, as, as local as it's legal to be and as local as it's possible to be because that's the best government is the one that's most local and most responsive to the, to the needs that are going on. And all the counties are not the same. They do not have the same issues. And certainly Honolulu does not have the same concerns that the outer islands have. And that's, those are just all reasons to 
fight for and defend home rule. Uh, and I urge you all to see that as an issue that's much bigger than any one. It's not just the agriculture issues that we've discussed recently, but it's every issue. The county should retain its powers, and it, especially in this situation where we see every week we can see an example of a Honolulu or Oahu-centric decisions affecting the Outer Islands to our detriment. And I, it's very important to fight for our rights as a county to determine our own communities because Honolulu does not understand our needs. We saw that in the election debacle. We saw that with the school decisions. We've seen that in so many ways. Now that's about it. I'm sorry to repeat myself, but the home rule issue is much more important than just the GMO issue. And to the extent that you see in any of your power, you will regret it down the line and future councils will regret it as well. So please don't. Uh, there'll be home rule fights both ways at the legislature. There'll be attempts for preemption of home rule, and there'll be attempts to defend and, 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 and uh, empower home rule, just as we saw last year. But I want to say as clearly as possible the home rule issue is not the GFO issue. It's, it's the counties have rights and self-determination issue in, in every way. Ms. Levin. Yes, um, <clears throat> I want to thank you, Senator Rodman. Um, and with respect to home rule, I agree totally that um, home rule has a far-reaching um, issue base. It's not solely, like you said, related to GMO. And in that respect, I just want to reiterate how important it is um, for us to know what's going on in the legislature. Um, past experiences, when we draft legislation, we can almost look at the title of our legislation and kind of get a sense of what that document is trying to accomplish. But in the legislature, the title is very vague. And unless someone flags us that says, this is a home rule issue, it might say something totally different. Um, and that's why I really want to express to you the relationship between our state representatives and our county is very important <clears throat> with respect to keeping us informed um, on things that we will not have uh, appropriate time to react. And uh, home rule is definitely very important. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. And you know, in that regard, the conversation that uh, Councilmember Nishi has started with these meetings is, is very important. And you all, you several of you have pointed to the fact that. We won't be able to touch base during the legislative session in, in, in a manner that's timely enough, and so we do need to establish ways of communicating during those urgent, urgent needs. And I think uh, if each of you make sure that you're on the mail email list for your representatives and senators, and please, act, if you would send me uh, that request, we'll include you. We do updates at least weekly during the session and notify everyone who's asked to be notified on that issue of what's coming up and what our concerns are. And yet things will happen much, much more quickly in the last four months. But hopefully we have laid the groundwork with some of these meetings to have that relationship, but we need to find a mechanism to keep in touch during the session itself. So Chuck, yeah, very Senator, you know, I agree with you 100% on the whole world matter. But, my humble opinion, there are some constraints. You know, home rule is a term that's really been gaining traction over the many years that I've been involved in county government. You know, as you know, I was you know, a former county attorney. And I never really could understand the concept of home rule. I understood it. I didn't know where it was coming from. Because, you know, after all, we are the county of Hawaii, and all of the counties are creations of the state. And we are given powers by the state constitution, state statute. These are all specified. That's the context by which we work. So if we are to give, be given broader powers, then it really rests with the legislature or the people by a constitutional amendment, possibly. That's just my opinion. Because I don't want us 
to really talk about home rule, home rule, home rule, when we don't really know exactly what home rule means. I mean, we know what it means, but I don't really think we have this broad, you know, all of these broad powers that people are talking about. It's something that has to be conferred upon us by the legislature. It's my opinion. Well, thank you. And of course, I agree with you that uh, we are constrained by state, state law and the Constitution. Um, the question is those gray areas that are not expressly defined in state laws. Does the county have the right to influence those areas or not? And those areas are existing in many different chapters, and it's going to be an ongoing fight. It's not going to end this year. Uh, so, so I certainly agree with you, of course, where the state has expressly legislated on a specific issue, and of course the county doesn't have that right anymore. But then there's all those other areas. Um, it's kind of like dark matter in space. You know, we don't know how much of it there is, but it's probably most of it. And there's a lot of areas where this has not been resolved. And you know, home rule can be a double-edged sword, I understand. But I keep coming back to the terrible decisions that are made that affect us from Oahu so many times. Um, I can't think of a better example than the recent election debacle where someone sat in an air conditioned office in Honolulu and decided what was going on and what was needed in Puna. And it was really inexcusable. And it really affected us and affected our civil rights. And yeah, so maybe that was state Kulian and we couldn't do anything about it as a county, but we have to address the reality that Oahu has a disproportionate amount of power and we don't share all of their concerns. And that's why the county government exists, and I think you should exercise your power as much as possible. And as I said, you know, all of those reasons, I agree with you. But for me, I'm a very simple individual. All I do is look at Chapter 46. What would, if, you know, are we doing something that's allowed in Chapter 46? And if it is, then we're okay. Because, you know, once we start getting into preemption issues, you know, that, that really takes us away from, from what we're empowered to do by Chapter 46. It's specified. These are the things we are empowered to do. And I really believe that that's how we should conduct our business. That my personal feeling that's just, I guess. Well, thank you. And, uh, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, but I'll, I'll be brief. Um, last year alone, there were three different state preemption bills that were attempted in the state legislature. One was over, it was obvious what it was. One was a little bit hidden, one was extremely sneaky and hidden. So there is, although I'm a simple man also, um, but there is these unresolved areas. Or else why did somebody try three times to take power away from the county last year? One in a very underhanded way. Someone inserted a single sentence into a bill that says the county shall have no authority over ag lands. Ag lands, that's what, 85% of our island? A single sentence was inserted to try to take your power away. And if it wasn't needed, why did they try to do it? And if the, if the question is totally settled, why did they try to do that? So I just think it's an ongoing fight that has, the bell hasn't rung on it yet. We're still fighting this fight, at least in some arenas. But I appreciate your comments. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Senator Rudman, I just wanted to also thank you for all the fine work you've done for our community. I know I speak for myself, and I really look forward to working with you in the future. Uh, I wanted to get right to the issue in regards to uh, the TAT. Because, uh, to I just wanted to share, I am a TAT mayor, uh, a better perfect so I wanted, if you could just go a little bit into what you plan to do. You're not going to like my answer, council member. I, I don't really plan to do anything about it. It's something that's going to have to be advocated by the counties. I don't have sufficient influence over the budget committees to make them change their mind. And right now, it's like a bunch of hungry people looking at the last three pieces of the pie. You know, they're not going to give one up. I just, I mean, to me, it's like you pick your battles. There's battles you can win, there's battles you can't win, and are a waste of energy. I, I'm not trying to, I'm not being facetious. I literally don't know what I could do to influence that. But 
writer minds and myself have argued for the counties deserving more of the, of the share. And it's true, because that's what it was put into place for, and we certainly should get you know, our share to at least handle the tourism that we get here. So I'm not saying it's fair the way it is, I'm saying it's a situation that I truly don't know how it works. And I don't want to hold out false hope that I can go over there and convince someone who's been looking at the situation ever since the recession to change their mind, but everybody else hasn't got them to change their mind. I'm very sorry to give you that answer. So. No, thank you for being here. Yeah, uh, I just want to clarify one thing that I think might uh, uh, where I disagree or at least uh, I'm uncertain what Mr. Chung was saying. But I, I think our home rule statute under uh, Chapter 46 is very broad. Section 13, we have, have the jurisdiction over health, life, property, basically well-being, and what happens is so also the state has that same power, and so does the federal government, and it's where we have those overlapping jurisdiction that's something where the if a problem arises. It's not um, where we can't find the right to be doing something in that, in that list, or that's how I see it. That's very broad. Um, and then we also have our public trust um, authority and obligation under the Constitution, which was settled in a 2006 um, Hawaii Supreme Court case, in terms of protecting our commons and our natural resources. So, but it's, I just want to, it's really where we have that overlapping jurisdiction and whether there's a conflict or not. Um, and in my view, it's where um, the state basically has done nothing in an area and then we do something. Um, and uh, what happens then. So um, I think we've got plenty of power as it is right now, but certainly my concern was really watching what, what went on last year. And, and as um, Council Member David said, we don't always know what's going on. We don't have just chance to read that Bill 727. Is, and it said it was for economic development and keeping consistency between state and federal laws, and there it took that line of our power and crossed out the words health and life, so that we would only have jurisdiction over protecting property. And when the representatives there, who turned out to be from the biotech companies, said, well, this is what we've done in over 20 other states, and the local governments interfere with our corporate objectives. And I, you know, we don't want to have that here. But I, I think one thing that people need to be conscious of is that we don't have villages and towns. Our first layer of government is county. If you remove that first layer, you're putting an ocean between the people and the gov layer of government that affects them. So I just wanted to make that clarification. I think we've got plenty of power. It's just where there's a conflict. Thank you. I actually was just going to address something that uh, Senator Rudiman uh, said, but let me address what Ms. Willey said too. You know, she speaks of that provision in Chapter 46, which references the health, welfare, and safety of the, uh, the public. But, uh, what she failed to uh, mention is there is one more word in there that's necessary to protect yeah, the health, welfare, and safety of the public. Now, for example, lava flow, albizia situations. I bet you if you poll everybody in the, on the island, 100% will say it's necessary that we go in there and protect the health, welfare, and safety of that area. But there are other gray areas which might not be necessary. We don't know. And that, that really is a gray area. But really what I wanted to say, uh, uh, Senator, was I really appreciate your candor about the TAP. You know, that's, that's refreshing. I mean, it really is. Because quite frankly, I was going to say something like, you know, with the TAT, and you know, Mr. Onishi really did a lot several years ago in, in lobbying, you know, to protect various aspects of that TAT, and that's well known. But really, it is what it is. I think what we do here at the council and try to advocate things with the legislature, it, I don't know how much effect it really has. I think what's going to be necessary is for the public, the general public, to understand how important the TAT is. And if you were to poll 
the public. Probably only 3% of the public would really understand what TAT means, let alone stands for. And until they rally around the importance of it, then you're 100% right. I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, you're very realistic in it, and I appreciate it. And I agree completely with one part of what you just said, which is probably 3% of the population knows what it stands for. And you're not going to get a lot of people excited over something that's obscure. Um, so that's not going to happen. But I, when you said whether it has any effect or any influence, I do think if the three neighborhood and counties were to speak with a unified voice, that does have an influence. Whether it's through the Association of Counties or when the mayors come down to visit, if they all speak, then we do hear that. You know, if they speak against each other, then it kind of neutralizes itself. But you have all three outer islands county, they go, all three outer islands speaking with one voice on a subject. I think that does carry quite a bit of weight. You just have to <coughs> coordinate with the other counties and express that. And then it does have weight. Us sitting here by ourselves, no one probably does. Thank you. Any other members? <coughs> If not, I will close. And I need to add on about the TAT because as Mr. Chuck mentioned, yes, I've been always trying to work on that. That you know, we've done it. We've had the other counties come in together as one. And um, Senator, two sessions ago you were there, right? Did any folks make it permanent? The nine point two five. I confess, sir, I don't know the answer to that question. You know so much more about this than I do. It was not so, so, so the Senate pushed for that, making it 9.25. And when we went there to try and get some of that portion, we were told by the Senate that no way, because we, the counties, didn't go and help lobby for that. Because the, the hotels, the industry, the hotel industries, and all the other people came in and fought against you guys to making it permanent, because they wanted to all go back to 7.25. But you folks went and you guys made it permanent and then it was like, okay, for your state budget. And the counties was going to get the share only off the 7.25. And so we try, the counties do try, but you know, like right now you are in the majority group at the Senate, right? Because there are what, 13 of you folks? Or 15 of you guys? Yeah, about that. Or 15? So you folks have a voice, so you could have to be the voice for Hawaii County because um, I know Senator Green is also in the majority group, right? And so we have at least two that's in that majority, right? And so you folks could have to be the ones that could have to push, because there's other senators that are also from the outer islands, right? I think Ross Baker, she's also in the majority group, right? And she's from Maui. Um, Senator Kochi is not in that group, right? And so. I don't want to characterize it that way, so I don't want to contradict you, but it's not totally clear that there's 15 in the majority and the rest in the minority. Uh, there was 15 in an organizational effort that happened, and Senator Kochi was actually among us, really. Um, so there are outer island representatives well well represented in that majority. So, then, okay, so if, if Senator Kochi is in there, so you folks have a bunch of the outer island senators, so if you folks are willing to help the counties, because we're moving, the counties, we are, we are together, and we did ASAC pass a, 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 a proposal for the TAP. So it'll be coming to you guys, and we'll be coming up to ask for more money from the TAP, but we need your, you guys' help. We need and thank you uh, for reminding me. And I will, along with those others that you mentioned, we will all be advocating for that on behalf of the counties. I just don't want to misrepresent the likelihood of that succeeding. And uh, you, you, I stand corrected. You guys already spoke with one voice and it didn't succeed. I do think that a few years ago, we're recovering from the recession. Everybody was clawing at the pie and uh, you know, everyone was taking pieces that were loose. And it's very hard, it seems, to go back the way it was, even in terms of uh, ag inspectors. Uh, at uh, the LNR, the enforcement officers, there's so many positions that were removed during that recession that have not been replaced yet. So even on the state side of things, they're still struggling to cut to replace services that we don't seem to have the money for. I'm just being honest with you that as much as counties are pushing for more of that TAT tax, there's people in the state government pushing 
for as much money as they and, can. And that's right. I understand that. Yeah. And I see what's happening there. But, but that's why to, the option was to have the counties, to have the authority, to have that power to increase the GDP in case of situations where you know economy goes down, the county cannot rely on to the state to get in the TAT, so at least you have another option because our option right now for the counties is basically property tax rates. That's our only revenue. So if we want to increase more services, we, have, we need to raise that. And we don't want to be hitting them on that part, right, to the residents. So you know, whatever, but whatever you can help us out with, you know, we appreciate that. I will advocate for that, sir. And if you could give me a couple of talking points, because you're much more expert on this than I am, I will. And I'll make sure Senator Green, all, all the big island senators do that. I just want to make it clear the opposing forces are at least, at least as strong. Uh, in that regard. Thank you. And then the last thing I just want to say thank you for meeting with Bryson and you know hopefully that can come true because you know like listen to what you said about you know that they are gonna put the temporary but there's a tube we under a lava tube that's gonna be under that, that cold lava right so we need to make sure that we protect the people from crossing over that tube because in case that collapse. So that's why with Bryson's idea that sounds much better. I appreciate you uh, putting me in touch with him. If it was up to me, I'd put those uh, in place also. <laughs> but the DOT engineers apparently feel comfortable with their plan, lava tube or not. You know, and you know, speaking of revenue that the county can control, and you've heard me say this before, as most of you have, real property tax can be raised without impacting the people who can't afford it. If you, if, if this is none of my business really, but if you raise real property tax on properties over a million bucks, let's say, or on second homes or third homes, then you're you're getting more revenue into the county through a process that you do have control over, and you're not harming people who can't afford it. Um, that that's just my little little idea. That's a great idea. Okay. Um, all those. Okay, I'm going to do a voice vote. All those in favor, please. Fifty-four. You say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Yeah, motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Lua, second by um, Mr. Poindexter. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Yes. Can you keep our... Thank you.